go now, baby. Welcome to another edition of Pound for Pound Picks. This time, the UFC Fight Night Edmonton edition of the show. We are probably sponsored by Bet99. Make sure you check them out for all your UFC betting needs. All right, so we have a very special guest here. A lot of Canadian content on the card. So we're going to bring in one of the best Canadian mixed martial artists of all time. He is known as the Canadian Gangster. Olivier Aubin Mercier, veteran of the UFC and PFL. Olivier, how are we doing? I'm good, and you? I'm doing great. So I got to ask you, we're coming up on a year anniversary uh, of your retirement from the sport. How much do you miss it? Uh, I, I miss it a lot, but uh, I'm happy with the decision I, I took, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I need to go back to, uh, to training, though. <laughs> I'm seeing the the difference in my body i would say and uh yeah, yeah i need to go back <laughs> i think my girlfriend would be uh, uh would be happy too if i go back <laughs> yeah you got to get that uh, that peak physique on the go again right yeah exactly you know the pico top of uh, physical ability you know yes sir okay so we got this fight night card going down saturday night in edmonton there's a lot of canadian content on it so we're going to rip through that as well as the main event in the Coleman event, but a little bit of an icebreaker here. Let's start by doing a little bit of a recap here of UFC 308 over the weekend. Uh, maybe the ushering in of a new era here for the UFC. Big time standout wins by Ilya Taporia, Hazmat Shemaev. So let's play matchmaker here. So Taporia, the first man ever to knock out Max Holloway, a very impressive performance by him. Now, all signs indicate that it will be him versus Alexander Volkanovsky. He will get the uh, a rematch. A lot of people campaigning, though, for Diego Lopez. If you're a matchmaker, who would you pair Tapori up with next? Look, personally, I like new matchups, so I would go with uh, Diego Lopez. Uh, even after Diego Lopez, I would go with uh, Mavzao, you know, uh, everywhere. Uh, so I do think we should go back to the old school uh, uh, ranking where if Volkanovski lost his match, he has to prove himself again and try to, wow. to have a rematch. I don't like uh, uh, like automatic rematch, you know. I do, la I do like Volkanovski and let's be honest, he's probably the best right now in uh, Ilya, but I like the matchup. I, I think I miss the the old school uh, GSP kind of champion that gonna pass all the category and then gonna pass it again. You know, uh, we didn't see that for a long time, and we always see that the champion wa win one or twice for the for, to defend the belt and then try to go up. I think it was cool with Conor McGregor. Uh, and I do think it's pretty cool too that they, what they are doing right now. But I feel some champions should stay at the same category, and they should try to beat everybody in the category instead of always rematch and uh, always try to go up. Uh, so that's my uh, personal opinion, you know. Yeah, I mean, most people assume that Tapori is just going to run through Volkanovski again. I do think he deserves it, though. You know, he did defend that title on five occasions. I think, you know, if you're able to defend a title maybe, you know, three, four times in a row, it, you know, I do think that would qualify you for a rematch. So we will look forward to that one in uh, 2025 here, most likely. So let's but I think you're right, but the thing is... You know, the, the matchup would be more interesting if he build himself uh, up again. You know, right now he yeah. just lost against Ilya. So there is this matchup, this uh, grudge match. But I'm like, ah, I would like him. Like, I would like to think that he have a like really a big chance of winning. You know, he maybe change or anything. So I would like to to see him win a couple of fights before going again. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him and Diego Lopez fight for a number one contender fight. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I don't like to do that, though, because then that kind of eliminates a guy from yeah. future title <laughs> contention, right? So politics yeah. at play there a little bit, potentially. Um, okay, yeah. let's talk middleweight division here. Hamza Shemaev, his most impressive performance to date here in the UFC, especially when you consider the competition, former champion, Robert Whitaker got absolutely mauled by Shemaev. He got his jaw, his teeth really messed up when he got submitted in that fight. So 
a bunch of different ways you could go with Shemaev at middleweight. I think it's too soon for a title shot. You know, at middleweight here, he's only beat Camaro Usman and Whitaker. He's had trouble staying healthy, I guess. He's mm-hmm. only fought, I think, three times in the last two years. So I would vote for uh, Imavov. And oh. I, am, I, I would pair those two up. Imavov, the fifth ranked middleweight right now. He's red hot. I think that would be an interesting fight. Who would you pair Hamzad up with for his next fight? Yeah, I think uh, you're right. I think we uh, we should see Imavov go against uh, Shmarev. And like you said, look, he won two fights in this uh, category. And uh, one of the, uh, the fights was against Usman, who is not uh, a middleweight. He's a, a welterweight. So I do think he have to prove himself a little bit more. And I think Imavov would be a great, great matchup. And it's a, it, it, he is a different opponent. You know, he, he's good uh, with takedown defense. Uh, he's good on the ground and he's really methodical uh, on the feet. So I think that's the matchup we should see for uh, his next fight. Um, I mean, there is Polo Costa, you know, but I, I do think Polo Costa need uh, maybe a win to uh, to get there. But the matchup is interesting. You know, they hate each other. So that would be a little bit funny, especially with uh, Polo Costa doing the trash talk. Uh, Dalidze maybe, but I I think Imavov is the way to go. Yeah, I think with Hamza, you know, let him prove that he can get in there and fight a little bit more consistently here. There's been issues with being sick and some weight cutting stuff, a little sketchy uh, way in for him for this fight, by the way, but we'll disregard that and give him a, a break there because of the performance. Okay. Look, he got me. He got me. I bet against him because I, I felt he didn't look the same. Uh, I really thought like, Oh, I think he's sick. I think he had trouble for the weight cut and everything. He really got me. I lost some money. Yeah, of well, that. a lot of people <laughs> fell for that, myself included. I think Robert Whitaker was around plus 190, plus 180. Yeah. And, you know, he's only had previously, he had only lost to Adesanya and uh, Duplessis in the middleweight division here in the UFC. Mm-hmm. So I thought it looked like a good spot, but uh, Shemaev, uh, he really showed up for that yeah. fight. Okay, let's get into this card here. UFC fight night going down in Edmonton. Let's start like we always do on the show at the top in the main event. Uh, Former champion Brandon Marino is back. He is a minus 160 favorite. Taking on uh, Amir Albazi, who comes back at plus 125. The over on a round set four and a half with the over juice to minus 220. Odds makers think this one will go the full five rounds. So Marino hasn't won a fight since January 2023. So he's coming up on two years here. Uh, He dishes it out a lot, of course, but he also takes a lot of damage. He's absorbed over 100 significant strikes and back-to-back fights now. As for Al-Bazi, he's been off off for over a year. 5-0 in the UFC, though. 18-1 overall in his career. Pretty big step up in competition for him, I think is fair to say. So, do you agree with Marino being the favorite here? And how do you think this fight goes? Yeah, I do agree. It should be the uh, the favorite. Uh, with that being said, there's too much uh, interrogation for this fight. You know, one of them didn't win for a long time and the other didn't fight for a long time. So uh, personally, I think Brendan's going to show up. But like you said, he absorbed a lot of uh, punch. And with those kind of athletes, we don't know when he's going to break, you know. Uh, we can take a, as an example Holloway, you know, <laughs> yeah. was supposed to have the best chin in the game and unfortunately a punch changed everything in his last fight. So personally, I think Brendan uh, Moreno is a, mo- uh, it's a more complete uh, fighter and uh, you have a good heart. Some You get punched a lot and uh, sometimes it hurt. Uh, but I do think he should have the, the edge against uh, Amir, personally. So if uh, if I had to put some money, I would put it on Moreno on this one, even though he's the favorite. Uh, he's not the biggest favorite, so I like the odds on this one, I think. Okay, yeah, maybe a good swap for Moreno to bounce back here. Okay, let's drop down to the co-main event. It is a women's fight. Rose Namajunas, a small mm-hmm. underdog, plus 105 over at Bet99. Aaron Blanchfield. Minus 135 favorite. So Blanchfield looking to bounce back from her first loss in the UFC. Thug Rose looking to get right back into title contention. She might punch her ticket to a title shot. Uh, This would be her third straight win 
Seven-year age gap, though, favoring Blanchfield mm-hmm. in this fight. Tight odds. What do you think of the matchup? <sighs> That's the kind of fight I wouldn't touch personally. <laughs> it's a, and the it's reason a is a coin flip. Yeah, it's a coin flip, but the, the odds like show it, you know. But the thing with uh, Osna Majunas is uh, she really show up uh, when there is a, a monster in front of her. Uh, it looked like she's she's the kind of fighter that is is really stressed about fighting, and when there's a monster in front of her, she really really show up and she's really really good. But the flip side is when there's somebody that uh, is not that known. Maybe she should have win against. She doesn't show up, so that's the thing that I don't like about this matchup. Uh, I think Hose is better, but she has trouble to uh, to show up against uh, fighters that are not known, and uh, uh, she, she, sometimes she has some uh, mental breakdown. So personally, um, I wouldn't touch uh, this one, especially Aaron is a lot uh, uh, younger. And Rose, uh, when when was the last time she fought? Um, yeah, she she fought Tracy Cortez. Yeah, <sighs> that's not a, too much along. But yeah, I think I wouldn't touch this one. Partially, maybe maybe for the the sake sake of it, I would go with Rose because I, I like the, the the girl. You know, she was a ex champion. Yeah. Um, but I have trouble seeing her like winning decisively, you know? Yeah, there are some inconsistencies with Rose. And it's funny you say that. We call that a, bit a letdown spot in other sports, right? Where you have the big team that's winning all the games and then they face a lesser opponent. Then they don't really show up, you know? We mm-hmm. see these every single weekend in the NFL. And maybe this is a UFC example of that potentially here going down on Saturday. So, yeah, that one should be interesting to see how that one plays out. Okay, Olivier, let's get into some Canadian content here. We have a lot of it on this card here, obviously. Yeah. The event taking place in Edmonton. Uh, let's start with uh, Mike Malott here. Uh, mm-hmm. Minus 260, taking on uh, Trevin Giles, who comes back at plus 195. The over-under round set at one and a half, with the over-shaded to minus 140. So the UFC really trying to give Malat a, a, a bit of a push here, it seems, <laughs> right? Like, we need a marquee. It's been a while since we had. We used to have a lot of big Canadian names in the UFC, uh, headlined by uh, the GSP, Rory McDonald. You had a pretty good run in the UFC as well. But they're, they're trying to make Malat into this guy that they can build around a little bit here. And he had been on a pretty good run, but let's call it what it is. A very disappointing performance last time out for him versus Neil Magdy. He was a big favorite in that fight. He was cruising. Round one, won that one. Round two, won that one. Then he kind of fell apart there in the third mm-hmm. round. He ends up losing the fight. So question for Malat, what does he need to do to get back on track in this fight? And how high do you think he can climb up the, uh, the welterweight ladder here? Ah, dog! It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough uh, tough road to uh, to go. But I, I do think the, the, the next fight is gonna win for sure. But people know now that uh, we need to put pressure uh, uh, on him to uh, to win the fight. You know, he, uh, we saw that uh, he's really technically awesome. Uh, he's a smart uh, fighter. But the thing is, when you put a lot of pressure, especially in the third round, he kind of gas. He, he remind me a little bit of me. Actually, he looked like me too. So, <laughs> <laughs> but so he, he, he remind me of myself. You know that the third round was a little bit more uh, sketchy. Uh, I do think he has some physical ability, but I do think it could be like a, a, a danger for him, especially uh, yeah, in the third round. So uh, we saw him really smart fighters, uh, really technical, looked uh, like a strong guy, uh, but. If we push it, uh, push him to the limit, it could be a problem. I don't think Trevin's gonna be the guy that's gonna push him to the limit. Um, I think Mike uh, is gonna win this one, but I think he's, he's gonna be careful uh, with this next fight. You know, I think he's gonna be uh, really careful to not make too much uh, mistake. Uh, so, uh, what's the the over? 
It's over under runs. It's one and a half with the over at minus 140. So if we're expecting them to play it safe and be a little bit mm-hmm. more conservative, that might be a bet to make. I think that's a fair number. Minus yeah, 140 yeah. on one and a half yeah. rounds, right? Yeah, so for me, that, that would be my bet, you know. Uh, I do think he's going to win minus 250. Meh, I don't, I don't know if uh, uh, I would go there, you know. Uh, anything can happen. But I think he's going to be really, like, careful. And I think there's a lot of pressure on his uh, shoulder. Uh, so he's get, he, won't be, he won't go there just to, to prove a point. You know, he's going to go there to, to do a job and to be, to be back on track. I think that's the that's the, the way he's going to see the fight. Uh, so I like the over. Yeah, I think you'll see him a lot on a lot of parlay tickets here on Saturday. Mm. A lot of Canadians can pair him with. Uh, a lot of Canadians in the minus 200 range as a favorite. So let's talk about the next one, Marc-Andre Berriot. He's a minus 210 favorite, taking on uh, Dustin Stolfuse, who comes back at plus mm. 160. The over-under rounds, kind of surprised by this, the... Over under round set at two and a half with the over actually shaded to minus 135. So tough spot here for Barrio. Two straight losses for him. He was knocked out in the first round back at UFC 303 at the end of June. Stolfuso, he also got knocked out in the first round in June. So let's talk specifically about Barrio as the Canadian. How much pressure do you think is on this guy? Two straight losses, a third straight loss in the UFC, especially if it's an ugly one, might not be on the roster here come this time next week. So how much pressure is on him given the losing streak? And how do you like this matchup? Look, it's it's a lot of pressure. I've been, I've been there. But I do think Barrio, one of his strengths is his uh, mental ability, you know, is re- really uh, capable of uh, of uh, achieving anything, and that's his biggest uh, strength and maybe his biggest uh, weakness too. <laughs> you know, sometimes he, he likes to go to war, and uh, uh, I think that the, his opponent Dustin is it's the same thing. They, they both really like to go to war, and uh, Mario, we know, can get hit a lot, um, and. I think that's a problem with him, you know, when he, he fights a really big uh, puncher, he get caught and sometimes he, he can't lose by a KO or a TKO. Uh, with that being said, I don't think Dustin is this guy. Uh, Dustin likes to go to war, but he uh, kind of show when he uh, when he punch, he's not the bigger puncher, he's a grander. He likes to shoot, but he's not that great at shooting. He likes to go on the ground, but he's not that great at going to the ground. But He's a warrior. He's a barbarian. So, uh, Mark Andre, I think, is kind of the same, but really more methodical with a better cardio. Um, so, personally, I do like Marc Andre Barrio uh, uh, in this spot. I, I think he's gonna win this one. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, I, I don't think Dustin's gonna be able to put him away. But I don't know if he's gonna be able to put uh, Dustin away too. So. Uh, Kind of okay with the, <laughs> the odds over there, <laughs> with the over under. Um, uh, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be hard because both of them like to eat punches, but they're kind of hard to uh, to finish, you know. Yeah. And it, I think how we're gonna see it is gonna be really close range. Um, so uh, can you repeat the the odds for the 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 under? Let's say. Uh, yeah, so it's at two and a half with the over is minus 135. So the under would be coming in ah. with money there on the two and a half rounds. So, you know, both guys, they're both coming off a knockout. First round knockout in the summer. Mm-hmm. So some might argue a quick turnaround, right? I think, I think that's part of the fun of it. <laughs> I would go under, I think. Okay, yeah, I think I would agree based on, you know, the style of each fighter. They're each coming yeah. off that knockout. So... That could yeah, be the I spot. Think... So even, you know, be careful with Barry O, though, on those parlay tickets. I talked about an all-Canadian parlay. Yeah. When you have two guys who fight like this, you know. Um, yeah, anything can happen. And I think the yeah. first round is going to be a little bit of filling out. Yeah. But I think when they're going to collide, they're going to collide. And it, it won't stop, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, and I do, like, I. it's crazy because I, I, I do feel... Uh, Maybe one of them is going to just give up because he's going to be too exhausted. 
of the, of the punch. I don't think they, they gonna, there's going to be a big KO, yeah. but maybe a late uh, TKO. Or I see them in the third round just closing their eyes and punching at each other, uh, each other face. So it's a, it's a tough one, but uh, I think it's going to be an exciting one. And uh, die, maybe the under is going to be like a lot of fun, you know? That's what I would lean towards, and I would say be careful with Barrio, though. On your, I'm going to put together an all Canadian parlay over at Bet 99 here. I, I don't know, I have to think about it if I want to put uh, Mark Andre on that. Okay, let's keep rolling here with the Canadian content. Uh, Marky women's fight uh, from a Canadian MMA perspective, at least. Uh, Jasmine Jadavicious, big favorite here, minus 230. She is going on my all-Canadian parlay, taking on uh, Ariana De Silva, comes back at plus 175. So I think this women's flyweight division is wide open here. We have the 13th and 14th ranked fighters in that division getting after it here. Um, how do you like this matchup for Jasmine, and what do you think her potential is of making a run in this division? Look, I think uh, she's going to win this one, and... Uh... Um, if I had to put some money, I would take her uh, in decision, you know. Um, uh, but <clears throat> I, think, I think they want to build her, you know. So uh, yeah. I do think this matchup is really, really, uh, really good for her. And, uh, I think they, they hope to see her get uh, get better. I think we need more fighter, more Canadian fighter, and I think Justin would be uh, one of the good prospects here. Yeah, she was really impressive in her fight in Toronto, one of the more dominant victories in uh, women's MMA here in 2024. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked about these Canadian fighters, a lot of lopsided odds, you know, most of them here in the minus 200 range. We have mm -hmm. a Canadian fighter going after. This could be the, the fight of the night potential. We have really tight odds. Uh, the man with one of the better nicknames in all of mixed martial arts, Charles Air Jordan. Coming in as a <laughs> minus 120 favorite, taking on Victor Henry. And Olivier, if you like striking, which most people do, then this is the fight for you. So around 5.5 significant strikes per minute landed for Air Jordan. Henry lands over eight, which is absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Jordan, though, two straight losses. He got knocked out by Gene Silva in the summer. That was a second round right. knockout. I believe so. A little bit of heat on him here as well. Tight odds. So who do you like in the battle of the strikers? Uh, I like, well, I mean, I know Shao, so I, I, will, I will have to go with Shao. But uh, look, it's, it's going to be his first fight at 135. Uh, yeah. And I have to be honest, normally when a fighter goes down in weight, it's not a good sign. Uh, you know, but if someone can do it, it's going to be Shao Journey. Uh, Victor Henry, like you said, really good striker. He like to roll with the punch. Uh, but the thing is, Charles Jordan is really good with kicks. Uh, so I, I like the fact that Charles is going to try to kick his arm, kick his uh, head. Um, so Victor cannot really roll with it. But with that being said, like you said, he's a tornado. Uh, Victor is a <laughs> truly a tornado and he likes to be in your face. Um, let's see how it's going to be uh, Charles Jordan and Cardio. Normally, his Carter is, uh, is really awesome. Uh, so uh, let's hope it's going to be the same at 135. And because of those uh, of that, I think I'm going to go with Charles Jordan. I think he's going to, for the first time, going to be the bigger guy. Uh, I think his Carter is going to be there. I think his kick is going to be a big a big thing in this fight. I don't think Vitor is going to try to uh, to take him down. You know, We know that Charles Jordan have, a, have trouble with takedowns. Um, and... So I don't think that's going to be a problem in this fight. Victor Henry uh, know how to uh, to punch. He have a good stand up, but he's not a, a big puncher. You know, he's not like Jean Silva. Uh, so I don't really see him uh, KO Charles Jourdain. Maybe a maybe a TKO uh, would say, but I think Charles Jourdain have a lot more chance than uh, Victor Henry. So for that. Like, it's minus 120. I like Sean in, the, in those odds. Air Jordan to get back on right. track. Okay, Olivier. So I think so. I think so. Yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be a very entertaining fight, at least on paper here, at least. So, it's going to um, be so good. 
a, a lot of Canadian content on this card. There's a number of fights that we haven't touched on. Derek Lewis is fighting, of course. He's always uh, messy <laughs> TV. So anything else on this card of particular interest to you, something that you might be especially opinionated on? Yeah. Uh, like we forgot one of the Canadian uh, in Eman Zabi. You know, the the, the brother of uh, Ferraz Zabi, one of the yeah. biggest coach in, uh, in, uh, in Canada. So... Uh, he's going to fight Pedro Muno. He's going to be his uh, biggest uh, test to date. And he's uh, like the odds show it's a coin flip. And I yeah. don't think Eman's going to be uh, smart enough uh, to win this fight. And uh, I think he's good enough too to win this fight. I mean, Pedro Muno has a lot of, uh, uh, of experience. And uh, let's be honest with ourselves, uh, his IQ is really high. I mean, he, he won a round by, with uh, Sean O'Malley and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, the, the fight got cancelled, but that yeah. maybe Pedro Munoz, that uh, his IQ was like, oh, maybe I cannot win this one. <laughs> yeah. So I think Pedro is a dangerous opponent, uh, but I think he's getting older. And at 38, I think it's it's getting older for this category at 135. We don't see it a lot. Eman Zabi, I think he's 36 years old, getting older there uh, too. But I think he's he have less mileage, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he got hit uh, uh, that much, and he's like in a row. If, uh, Eman is in a row, and I saw his training camp. He looked great, uh, and he bring people to uh, to train with him uh, this time. So um, I really like uh, Eman Zabi in those odds. Uh, I'm not sure it's what one minus. Minus 115 minus, on both sides here over right, at Well, minus one. Uh, so I like him, man, in those odds. Uh, do I think it's going to be a really hard to finish? He is known to be hard to finish um, and is really methodical. And Eman is the same. So I think that's going to be uh, like a decision uh, for Eman, you know? Okay, Olivier, I just punched it in over at Bet99. I'm going to go a little bit conservative with my parlay. I'm typically not a big-time parlay guy, but I think a very safe one here. It's a two-legger, uh, Mike Malott, minus 260, and Jasmine, minus 230, comes in at minus 101 odds. So basically very close to even money here. I think that's a safe one. I'll be locking that one in over at Bet 99. So let me ask you here be, before we go, as we talked about at the top of the interview, you're 11 months into retirement. What's the one thing you miss the most about competing and the one thing you miss the least? Uh, you know, the high and down, you know, I really like this, that you have to fight and then the pressure go up, go up, go up, go up. And when it's done, everything go away and you are, you are free for, well, one or two days <laughs> but i really like the those two days that you were free and in vacation having fun with the family going to the restaurant you can drink a little bit uh, so i really like this and i think that's the thing i i, I miss the most and the, the other thing i would say it's 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 weird to say but um i liked when uh, i had a diet i had to make sure everything uh, was great in, me, in my life, training every day um, to have a goal. You know, that really, uh, I miss that too. Uh, what I, uh, I don't miss is the pressure, you know, the stress mm -hmm. coming with it. Um, like a little bit would be good. Uh, right now, I, I'm doing a, lit, uh, a lot of TV, you know, uh, of TV show. And I feel, I feel it a little bit and it go down again. So... That kind of pressure, I like it, but MMA was just too much for me. <laughs> I was getting older by the day, um, so uh, that the thing I think I would uh, I don't miss, you know, the, the constant pressure and the, the stress. And let's be honest, uh, it's a dangerous part. So, uh, um, like I'm happy I, I stop now because I don't think I have a lot of. Uh, like a thing going bad with my health. And, yeah. But we saw, we see those fighters that uh, took maybe like two, three fights too much. And it's different, you know? So I think for me, I'm lucky that I was not getting punched too much and uh, I stopped at the right time.
Bad. Yeah, you got to retire on top, which is rare mm-hmm. for this sport. So that's great to see. And uh, it was absolutely a pleasure talking to you today, breaking down this card. Hopefully we have a chance to do it more often here in the future. So we'll end Yeah, the dog, you call me. Call me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to be hitting you up here before the end yeah, of 2024. Yeah. No doubt about it. We have a lot of big fights to discuss here in the oh, yeah. final quarter of the year here in the UFC. So we will leave it at that. Olivier, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to all the viewers for tuning in. Make sure you head on over to Bet99 to lock in those bets here for the UFC fight. And we'll see you guys again next week. Yeah!